Paul, when I began to really focus and follow cosmology several decades ago, the, the, the hint of parallel universes or multiple universes was very exciting and uh, very controversial and uh, right on the, the, the extreme edge of speculation. Uh, I remember a conversation we had uh, years ago that uh, uh, you uh, were expressing some doubts about uh, some of the thinking behind multiple universes. Uh, today, multiple universes among a certain class of uh, cosmologists is like conventional wisdom. It's like matter and energy. Everybody working on the details, but nobody in any way questions it. Uh, uh, what has happened in terms of multiple universes and how has your own thinking changed or not changed. <laughs> You're absolutely right that it is now uh, fashionable, at least in the circles I move in, to <laughs> assume that there must be multiple universes and you can get at them in a variety of different ways. And, and one or two arguments I think are really quite compelling. And the one that I give is that you have to take a position about our universe, this one, how did it begin? And we all agree it was a big bang. And if that was uh, the ultimate origin uh, of, of the universe, it didn't just uh, join onto something else, uh, then we can say, well, was that a natural process or a supernatural process? Well, as a scientist, I'd like to believe there's a natural process underpinning it. Well, any natural process that can happen can happen again. And so you're led on this very general ground to suppose mm -hmm. that there must be other big bangs scattered throughout space and time and other universes that follow from it. So that's a, a very general argument. Of course, you run into the problem, is this science? How would we ever detect these other universes? What effect would they have? Uh, if this is just an armchair prediction, uh, is it of any value? And I think that is a, a valid argument because uh, you can play around with mathematical games, but unless there are observable consequences for us here in this universe, uh, probably that's a bit of a pointless exercise. So there is a sort of mad scramble uh, to try to find how the presence of other universes might leave an imprint mm. in the cosmic background radiation or something of that sort. Uh, the, some of this stuff has an air of desperation about it, <laughs> I must admit. Uh, but uh, it, it's true that the pendulum has swung. And when I was a student, uh, people were baffled enough about this one universe <laughs> without having to invoke a multiplicity of them. What fascinates or disturbs me, I'm not sure, is the nesting of different kinds of multiple universes. We say multiple universes and then we know there are different ways of generating them. Well, they're not contradictory to each other. And so if you believe what people say, they really nest. So if you have a, a, a many worlds theory where every quantum moment you have this branching, in each one of them, you can have this universe going on forever in the same space-time uh, continuum. And within that, you can have the bubbling off of other universes through eternal inflation. And within that, you could have uh, separate Big Bangs just spontaneously occurring the way this may have. And so, and, and then you may have higher dimensions in one or the other. Uh, and so you have this nesting of, of an inf uh, of a very large number, maybe an infinite number of ways that multiple universes are generated and then mul in infinities within those infinities. I, I mean, mm -hmm. th this either begins to uh, make you crazy or to say something's wrong with this whole picture. Right, it's very easy to think up ways of getting other universes. And in fact, historically, it's been around a long time because uh, back in the days when it looked like there might just be one space going on forever, then if you just assume it's populated at roughly the same mm. density as our region of the universe, then if it's infinite, well, sure, if you go far enough, you're going to come across not only a duplicate Paul Davis, mm -hmm. but a duplicate planet Earth and a duplicate galaxy and so on. And Max Tegmark has yeah. famously calculated just how far you'd have yeah. to go. It's an awful long way. But you're assured that in a spatially infinite universe, there will be regions which will be like clones of each other, an infinite number of them. So once you're into the game of infinity, of course, you get all sorts of weird consequences. And th the question is, how do we wrap our heads around that? Do we say, well, this is a sort of reductio ad absurdum of the application of mathematics to the world? Mm -hmm. uh, is it legitimate? We just have to live with it. Uh, the universe is weirder than we thought. <laughs> uh, and, and I come back to the point, well, you can play these mental games, 
And it's great fun to talk about and write books about, but in terms of doing actual science, unless it has an implication for real observable things, then uh, it, it's a bit of a pointless exercise. But at the end of the day, there is an answer that is the right answer. It, it, it's not, it, the, the, the ultimate answer is not vague. The ultimate answer is there. Right. So it could be that there are an infinite number of other universes or there are not. And then the next question is, will we ever know? And could we ever know? Even in principle, could we ever know? Mm. And in some of these models, even in principle, we could never know. Of course. That's the most logical thing. In one sense of thinking, if I put myself in a dark room, I'd see the only logical things are nothing at all, I mean, really nothing at all, or an infinite number of everything. Right, this really interests me. This, this because subject. why would there be a finite number of anything? <laughs> right, right. So there are only two natural states of affairs. Nothing exists or everything exists. And if, like most people, you believe that less than everything that could exist really does exist, then who got to decide what separated the realm of things which actually exist from the realm of those things which could have existed but don't? Yes, right. Uh, and um, supposing you drew that boundary differently. Uh, and so that seems very strange because it looks like a selection has been made. Yeah. You can imagine uh, an urn uh, f full of all possibilities, all possible existing things, and that some <laughs> magic hand has pulled out a privileged subset. And yeah. okay, existence is bestowed upon you, tough for the rest. Yeah. Uh, it seems very strange. Yeah. And yet, is it any stranger than nothing exists, everything exists? <laughs> I don't know.